So in this next section, we'd like to talk about the TCP push functionality. Now this is also just a single bit in the code bit section of the TCP header. And let's see what it's used for. So I talked in a previous video about how when, when TCP is informed of a send call, which is the sort of technical process that some upper layer application is telling TCP, I've got some bytes, send them. And then the upper layer application says, here's the location of the buffer where I've stored these bytes, and here's the last byte I put in here. Here's the section of bytes I've just sent to you. We talked in some pretty previous videos about how does TCP make the decision about, okay, do I take those bytes right now, package them in segment, and send them, which might result in a very, very tiny segment if there's not a lot of bytes there, or does TCP say, okay, I'll start creating a segment with those bytes, and then I'll wait for the next send call, and then I'll grab the next section of bytes until I got a pretty thick, pretty big segment here that I can send. And we talked about how there's basically two answers to that question. There's this thing called the Nagel's algorithm, and the Nagel's algorithm says just that. Just keep buffering the bytes, keep sending them, as long as there's unacknowledged data, as long as there's data out there that you've already sent, and you have not received an acknowledgement for it yet, keep buffering your bytes. And then once the acknowledgement comes in, then you can stop the segment and send it on its way. That's the Nagel's algorithm. So that's what we're looking at right here. And, and that, from what I understand, is on by default for most applications. So that's what we're seeing right here. In this particular case, the sending application has sent down 12 bytes. And the transmission control block for TCP runs through all of them. And it decides that, OK, I'm going to create a segment out of bytes 1 through 9. So those bytes are buffered, and then that segment is created. Bytes 10, 11, and 12 are too large to create in the segment. And then the segment goes. So now if we were talking about if that sending application was sending a large file, a big data transfer, this would be fine, right? We actually would want to create large segments, packed as much as we can with bytes, and then send them on their way. Nothing wrong with that. Where the Nagel's algorithm would not be a good idea, this idea of just, let's just put bytes into a segment and just keep buffering them until we got a pretty big thing to send, would be in the case of something like Telnet, where you're actually sending to TCP something that's intentionally small, like a keystroke, and you don't want it to wait. You want that to go out as soon as possible. So let's say the Nagel's algorithm was still on. It's received four bytes, and TCP says, okay, I'm waiting. You got any more to send me? Okay. I've waited long enough. Everything's been acknowledged. I guess I'll go ahead and send this. And there goes your Telnet keystroke. And unfortunately, what you were trying to do was do a control break. There's some massive debug coming down, and you wanted to kill it. But because of the Nagel's algorithm, your keystroke took a few milliseconds too long to actually get to the router. He says, oh, too late, too bad. So this is where the TCP push bit was developed. As I've mentioned, it's a control bit in the TCP header. Now the sending application has to inform TCP of this function. TCP itself, when it sees bytes in a buffer, all those bytes look the same, right? TCP doesn't have any way of indicating that some bytes are important, some bytes are not by itself. TCP can't say, oh, I should probably create a segment right now with these five bytes instead of these 20 bytes. You know, so the sending application, the developer of that application, has to write something into it so that when it does that send call to TCP, it includes some information in there saying push. So when it does that, when TCP gets the push message, when TCP says, oh, there's some bytes in a buffer, and by the way, the application is telling me to push those bytes. The sending TCP device will do this. It'll say, right now, I'm done. Put those in a segment. Let's not wait anymore. Let's not wait for any more send calls. Let's just take that grouping of bytes, put it into a segment. Now, maybe I was already in the process of creating a segment. Maybe I was like, you know, a third of the way th through creating a maximum segment size. Here come some more bytes with the push function. Great. 
put those in my existing segment and stop, send it on its way. So the idea is push means don't wait anymore. Take what I've sent you, put it either into an existing segment or make a brand new segment out of it. Set the push flag, like it says here, and then send it on its way. Now the receiving TCP process, as it says, immediately pushes the data to the application. So if I'm the receiving process, if I'm receiving a bunch of bytes from TCP, in that particular case, TCP sometimes will say, well, um, I'm going to just store these in a receive buffer, and once I have a certain quantity, then I'll let the upper layer application know, hey, I've got something for you. You might want to pull these bytes over here. But when the receiving TCP process gets a segment with the push functionality, he immediately says, okay, the next time I have a chance, the next time the CPU gives me the go ahead, I'm going to tell it, I've got some bytes right here. I'm not going to wait, I'm not going to buffer any more stuff, I'm going to tell it, here's some bytes that need to go upstream immediately. So in this particular case, when the telnet keystroke comes in, the sending application will send the push flag or the push you know, API or whatever it uses. The transmission control block for TCP will say, I need to create and send this segment right now. So in the process of doing that, you can see here in the code bits, it sets the push flag. And then that segment goes immediately. And then on the receiver, when he sees that push code, he says, I ne immediately need to push this up the stack, send it up to the application layer process. So here's a, a real good example of the push flag. I think I've captured this. So this is an example of when I did a Telnet session to INE's racks. And just to focus in on this, so you'll notice 200, 200, 200.2, that was me, that was my source address, and 75.140 was the INE rack. And notice these are all really small, right? So by way of comparison, look at the TCP acknowledgement. So in an acknowledgement, there's no data at all. All you've got is the TCP header, the IP header, and the Ethernet header. And all that combined is 54 bytes. So this length field here in Wireshark is showing you the entire length of the Ethernet frame itself. So the Ethernet headers, the IP headers, and the TCP header, no data, 54 bytes. So look at this Telnet data. It's only an additional six bytes of data, and that's it. And in those six bytes of data, every single one of them has the push flag set. So here I'm pushing some data up. Now I get a little bit of data back from the router I was connected to. He also has the push flag set. I send another keystroke to the router. Once again, push. The router sends something back to me. Push. So in a Telnet session, every single segment going back and forth has this push flag set so it will not be delayed. It will immediately be sent up the process so that Telnet can display it instantaneously. So that is the functionality of the push flag. And in the next section, we'll look at our final flag, which is frequently associated with the push flag, which is the urgent bit. It's not set right here but we'll see under what circumstances it might be set and what it's actually supposed to convey.